In this video, we're going to talk about how to use environment variables in Jenkins. Let's jump right into it. I have a Jenkins LTS controller, version 2.303.1. On this controller, I have an agent connected, and this is a Linux-based agent. There's a link to the sample repository that we're using today down in the description. In the README, there will be links to all of the other content that we're talking about in this video. First thing, let's go ahead and set up a pipeline job using our example. So we're going to be working our way through Jenkins file 1 through 5. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Let's go over here and say new item. We're going to say env pipeline. OK. And go here and get and that. And Jenkins file, whoops, got to do main. And Jenkins file dash one. And click on save. Now let's go take a look at that before we run it and understand what we have here. This is a very simple pipeline and it's just saying sh env pipe sort. Now since this is a Linux based agent, env is what I need to do in order to see environment variables. If I was on Windows, I instead would use set. So let's go back over to our controller and click on Build Now. This first pipeline is just sort of level setting to understand what is available to us. So we look at env sort and we see all of the environment variables that are available to this pipeline at the runtime. So we can see here we have build display name, build ID, build number, build tag, build URL, lots of other different types of environment variables. Some that may be useful to you, some maybe not so much. Now let's look at the first way to integrate with environment variables. Taking a look at our pipeline, let's go to Jenkins file two. And we can see here that we're defining a top level environment variable. So this is the environment block at the global level of this pipeline. So we're saying, AAA top level var equals top level, and then we're going to echo that out. So let's go modify our job and take a look at two. Click save and click build now. When we take a look at two, what we see is that we have our echo of top level. And if we take a look at the list, we see AAA top level is right here at the top along with all of our other environment variables. Now you can also define environment variables at a stage level. So if you define an environment variable at the global level, that environment variable is available for every stage. However, if you define an environment variable at a stage level, that environment variable is only available within that stage. So let's take a look at an example for that. If we come back over here and take a look at Jenkins file three, we have our stage one, just like what we saw. I've got a stage two of an environment variable, stage level var. We're gonna echo that out, but then we get down to stage three and I'm just going to echo out the stage level var again. And we should see that it is not within scope. So let's go back over to our job, click on configure. Let's change two to three, click save and build now. If we take a look at three, what we're going to see is there's our stage one, there's our stage level echo, and we can see AAA stage level var has set to stage level. But if we get down to stage three, which is right here, we're echoing out nothing. And we can see that the AAA stage level variable is not within scope within stage three. Now up to this point, We've only assigned static values to our environment variables. There are other ways that you can populate the value of an environment variable. One way is by calling a step. If we take a look at Jenkins file four, what we have is at the global level, a AAA random var, and I'm using the sh step. Remember, I'm on a Linux-based agent, so I'd use sh. If I'm using shared libraries, I could create a step within a shared library that could produce the value for an environment variable. So I'm doing sh, returning standard out, and I'm just randomizing a general value, doesn't really matter what it is, and then I'm trimming it. So we have all of our same information here, and we get down to stage four, and we should see a AAA random var. So let's go modify our job, 
and change that to four. Click Save and click Build Now. If we take a look at the output, we can see that we have a AAA random var set within this stage four step. And finally, there is a special helper that you can use to load credentials into an environment variable. And if you take a look at the documentation for pipeline syntax under directives, you would see the environment definition. But then it talks about this helper called credentials. And within credentials, the supported credential types are secret text, secret file, username and password, and SSH with private key. Now, these aren't the only ones. There are other plugins that do support this. You'll have to look up on your plugin if they support this or not. There are a few others that do. Let's go take a look at our Jenkins file and see what it looks like. So if we go over and look, take a look at Jenkins file five, we can see here at the top, AAA secret text is credentials of secret text. And then we will see down here in stage five, an echo out of the secret text. Now you might say to yourself, now wait a minute, why would I want to echo out something that is secret? You'll see in just a moment. So let's go and define quickly a credential that is named secret text. Whoops, there we go. Add credentials, I'm gonna change this to secret text. The secret is A, B, C, D. And the ID is secret text. And the description is secret text. What really matters is the ID here because this is the ID that is being loaded right here into credentials. So let's go back in, click on OK. Let's go back over to our job, modify our job to load up five. So here's five and click save and click on build now. If we take a look at five, what we're going to see at the top, since this is a global variable, we see the with credentials being called and it's masking the supported pattern matches of AAA secret text. So if we go ahead and go all the way down to our last stage, whoops, here we go. And what we're going to see here is we see the echo out, but it's all stars. It's obfuscated with stars. And we can see here in the list that AAA secret text is all stars. So the pipeline is able to tell if a value is a credential, if you've given it the credentials helper to load the value. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.